The following is a preview of a Patreon exclusive. Let's uh, maybe kind of move into, and we don't need to spend a whole lot of time here because I want to talk about Cody as he was in Legends versus as he was in, well, we know how he is in canon, which we're going to get into, but I, I guess the way I would summarize him, and, and to be fair, like we, before we came on air, I, we both had acknowledged that my experience with Cody and Legends is really limited. Like I was really struggling just to remember like, where the heck was he? Like, because we yeah. got stories. I mean, he's got a whole lot of stuff in there and, and you pointed out it, a lot of it came from the comics. And so there were so yeah, many. There was an actual Clone Wars comic series. Yeah. Like and I honestly did not. I really wasn't into clones again. I think I've said that many times at the time. Um, so it wasn't, wasn't kind of, uh, you know, an, an issue or a, a, a particular comic that I was trying to pick up. So I miss a lot of the storyline. But I, the way I would summarize it, I think what the focus, the primary focus on Cody was the fact that he was training stormtroopers, right? He stayed on with the Galactic Empire training stormtroopers, trying to teach them all of the elite skills that he had learned from Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Jedi, you know, his experiences with Rex. But it wasn't the, it was a very different kind of environment than what we're seeing now play out in canon. Yeah, the transition to the Empire, I don't think it, well, it, it, they didn't really have the opportunity to explore a lot of what that was before recently. Mm -hmm. You know, when they, when they had done it, it was less of the, well, it was, gosh, the times I've seen it done, like they were like the Republic Commando books, like they, they transitioned to Imperial Commando. So you got a little bit of it yeah. there and you got the rigidity of it and things like that. But you didn't necessarily have this true oppression and brutality of it. At least I don't remember that part of it. And so I think that's the part that you're, we're straight, we're seeing a bit more straightforward now and more in our face. And that's what Bad Batch is, I think, why Bad Batch is important, I think, from an overall store, Star Wars canon and understanding it, why it's important to consume this, even if you're maybe lukewarm to the series, I think that's why it's important because I think some of that's probably true with Cody still. He's probably training that next generation, both the clones, but also maybe maybe doing like what Crosshair is doing and bringing up some of the conscripted soldiers you know, up to speed as well and traditioning some of that. But you get a, di get a different component of that with what he is seeing, and it's not what he came from. This wasn't what they fought for and what they, you know, his brothers were dying for. Mm -hmm. And so it is interesting seeing that just evolution of, that, of the story in general from what we had before, because with Order 66, it was a bit, I mean, it just wasn't explored, unfortunately, in, in Legends, I think, at least as far as I remember. And now we're really getting good bite-sized chunks out of, what that transition looked like and how each individual clone, at least in you know, the more recognizable ones for right now, but even some other new ones, you know, how they've transitioned and what that actually means for them. What do they see? How does it make them feel? And then how does the whole chip and everything else work into that? So the, the Clone Wars, this is no secret, but seeing the Clone Wars series really changed our viewpoint on all of the clones, right? We, we learned right. so much more about them and really they become they became very humanized because if just on the movies alone you don't get that at all you get the fact that they're clones and they're you know they're being sent out to die and fight a war that's it yeah they're just soldiers yeah. right i mean basically just foot soldiers yeah, yeah. And, and the clone wars of course and it was probably one of the primary missions or goals of that series was to humanize them right to pitch to really kind of do that juxtaposition of the clones uh, versus or i guess humans versus uh, robots or androids, right? Uh, and right. and through that we get all kinds of great stories, starting with the very first one, you know, with that whole Yoda and you know, talking about the clones and how unique they were and, and all of that, right? So that was kind of a common theme. But for Cody specifically, that one cut deeper now, because in the movie, right, in Revenge of the Sith, and his line is at the very like right before he shoots Obi Wan. This is like seconds before Order sixty six. He tells Obi Wan Kenobi, "Come on, when have I ever let you down?" Right. And Kenobi kind of laughs like, oh, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't I shouldn't be thinking. And so we get that's our first like, again, they're pulling back a little bit on on kind of giving us a some a preview of that. OK, there's a history here. Apparently they've worked together. You know, we didn't see any of this stuff because, you know, Clone Wars hadn't come out yet, but they definitely right. had a, a good working relationship. And then like, I don't know, 15 seconds later, he takes the order. Uh, he takes the order and he doesn't even think twice about it. Like we didn't get the struggle that we had with like Rex or 
you know, some of the other clones that we know remove their chips, like Gregor, Wolf, all those guys. He just, there was no contact. <laughs> yeah. He just blindly was like, okay, yeah, let's shoot him down. And he gives that, he gives that little two pointed, I love that little wave thing that he does, that little right, right. up there, boy, shoot that guy down. I don't know who he is anymore. He didn't let him down. He helped him down. <laughs> he helped him down. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think at times, uh, maybe, and uh, Mike's already left because he's old and tired, but I think Mike and, and, <laughs> So at, at one point in some of the older episodes, they kind of really were talking about this and I don't know where they landed anymore, but there were some thoughts. There's always been thoughts again, prior to the clone wars and even after that really about did Cody really try to shoot him down? Right. Was he trying to kill him? Was he, you know, was he struggling? And so he just kind of, you know, I didn't really shoot him. I shot the rocks and if he lives then great, if not, then I did my mission kind of thing. I think it was kind of open to speculation. I think for me, Particularly, I think it was, he was just following orders and just did it. But it's very hard to, I don't know, I struggle with that now, given what we know about Cody, especially after this last episode of The Bad Batch. Yeah, no, I think he, I think he made an honest effort to take him out. I don't think there was anything holding him back because he, like you said, he just didn't hesitate. It was, he got the order, made the point, mm -hmm. they shot it, the, 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 the shot was accurate. It was right, I mean, he was a moving target and he was moving quickly on the, I forgot what the, the lizard-like thing was, but. So, I mean, they made a, they made a good effort and then they were out there looking for him and they didn't finish, they intended to finish the job. And so I think, uh, I think over time though, over the last, you know, year plus now that's gone by, clearly something has changed though with Cody, you know, whether it's like you've speculated a bunch of times, whether it's just the, uh, the chip's effectiveness is wearing off. I don't think he's probably had it removed. It'd be interesting if he did, but we don't see any visible scarring. And again, in the empire, it seems like it'd be very difficult to have that done. Although it's interesting, like how did Crosshair have his removed? Hmm. I guess I guess we will or eventually did find that one out too. I think he did. Well, maybe he had it burned out when no, we had it taken out. But maybe it was my, anyway. This isn't Crosshair, <laughs> but that's that's a whole thing. We still got to get more clarity <laughs> right, yeah. around. I, actually, I wonder if they'll even give it to us. But I think with Cody, I think he yeah he I think he took he took his fair shot. He intended to do it, but yeah, clearly something's changed and. I would like, I like the idea that the chips are losing effectiveness, right? They were, they were designed to go on for so long after the order. And then the, the plan was that the clones would be decommissioned or they'd be put down, whatever it would be mm -hmm. within some amount of time, but they've not been able to transition to that because this order, this, uh, the, the bill that keeps trying to go through that they had talked about in this last episode. And I'm sorry, it's uh, escaping me, but the defense bill, or whatever where they'll conscript soldiers instead of continues the clone army has just taken longer to get effect. So this is the side effect of that is that now we're way, we're beyond end of life of the chips and we're starting to see them malfunction or just be less effective or they just start to turn off. Maybe the internal battery dies. I don't know. But. <laughs> yeah. They got to get them on a charger. I was just thinking this is completely related, but not related. But when you were talking, I thought, you know, Nala say is locked up right now and they're doing God knows what with her. I, I think it has something to do with cloning, but I just wonder oh, yeah, if, if at some point they go to her and say, why are these, why wouldn't they, that to me, I would be asking her like, what's going on with these chips and how do we stop them? Or is there a way to kind of just pull the plug and decommission them and, and all that? But I just wonder if they're going to, it seems that. like you, it seems like you'd take a meeting with her, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. you take, you, she's clearly doing busy work or doing lots of busy stuff, trying to clone the emperor or whatever it mm -hmm. is, you know, getting genetic material you know, for whatever, but it would be like, you know what? I'll say I need to, I need to, I need half an hour of your time, please. Because, uh, y'all's design, yeah, this is not is working proving out. a little bit, proving a little faulty. Right. So, right. and you're the only coming, yeah, coming, no one that's you're left. The, that's the live, so this is all on you. Sorry. Uh, right. Congratulations. Right. You're the only one that knows anything. Okay. So the other, the other part of it, I guess, is who, uh, the, in answering the question of who is and who was commander Cody, uh, the, his relationship with Obi-Wan's we've talked about that again, not, I mean, it, a lot of it, we just kind of have to, uh, you know, take it face value. Don't get me wrong. There were plenty of episodes in the Clone Wars where, you know, he was following Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, right right on his hip in many of those episodes, right? So he right. did some really cool stuff. There was one scene, and I forget which episode it was, but he and uh, so it was Commander Cody and Obi Wan Kenobi, and they were kind of pinned down, and they were trying to back into a ship to get out to escape. And there's a moment there where he yells at so Cody yells at Obi Wan Kenobi something about the canisters or whatever it is. And so instinctively, Obi-Wan uses the force, launches one of these like pressurized canisters into the air towards the troops that are shooting. And then Cody takes a shot, right? So showing that they work really well together. 
like tactically, they right. had some really cool stuff and very creative ways that they work together. And of course they get away. So there was a great examples of where they did work well together. We know he had that relationship with Rex, a very close relationship with Rex, you know? Yeah. It sounds like, yeah. It. And, and I think it's, I mean, it stems from the Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker relationship because they were usually paired up together and on all kinds and sorts of missions. But when you talk about two people that really had a very strong bond and where I want to go with this, and I don't know if this is really a fair question because we don't have a lot of details here, but I went back and watched some of Rebels, particularly the scenes where Rex is in there and, and he's kind of reminiscent about Cody, which were, really aren't a whole lot. And I think that was surprising to me. Now, I don't know if that's because at the time they really were unclear as to where they would take Cody, Commander Cody, and where they wanted his ultimate uh, journey to end. But for somebody like Rex, I do find it odd that he does not really mention him much in Rebels, given their close relationship. And they may retcon this later at some point, but... Not retcon, enhance. Enhance, I'm sorry. That's a bad one. Well, and I think it would make sense that Rex would talk about, I mean, Wolf and Gregor in, in Rebels because they're there, right? And they've gone through a lot. A lot of it was what's happened since the Empire. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think some of it, they may have been you know, more on the production side of things rather than you know, what are the characters thinking. Probably had, a, I mean, they, they, I'm sure they, I'm sure they at least had a discussion about Cody. You know, what do we think a rough idea of where Cody is or how Cody is, is you know, in, how is he involved in this era? Mm -hmm. You know, and where is he gone? But they probably, they didn't have to invest anything in it because they had Wolf and Gregor there. True. That's, now, that's fair. Yeah. Again, again, I think with Rebels, you know, you could question, well, why didn't they have Cody there? But that tells me that Cody's on a different arc and a different trajectory. And I think with the Bad Batch, I think that's one of the things why we would like to say that he's going to go and meet up and find Rex, or maybe he's heard rumors of Rex or something like that. But if, we, if not, if we want to keep that Rebels stuff really intact and that there is something different with it, then it lends itself more that, no, Cody has a different path here since going, you know, presumably going AWOL. We, we, mm -hmm. I believe that's probably a true statement from Rampart. But clearly he's going about it a, a different way than what Rex has. So that'll be really interesting to see play out the rest of the season of Bad Batch. Even if he does meet up with Rex, does he stay? Or does he have some other path that he wants to go, you yeah. know? And maybe not the cut path, but because it doesn't seem that way. But again, no. we're going to, this is why I'm hoping we see more of Cody this season, because I think it'd be really great to really understand what is it that he wants out of life that is completely open and ambiguous to him at this point. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, I, I want to come back to some of that too a little bit later when we talk about like what's the future hold for Cody and, you know, Potentially, speculatively, what can what are we gonna, you know, see with him? And maybe we don't see anything. Right. And then, really, I want to dig into like what you're talking about those paths because, well, we'll save it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about the. Uh, so let's move into the Bad Batch now. So we've talked about uh, Legends, we talked about Canon, and I, I kind of want to focus now on the Bad Batch because it's you know, relevant. But I think for for Cody, what we saw was humanity, right? This very different from the empire and we saw that um, i think we mentioned this on the main show here but what really stood out to me was that we are getting very clear a very clear indication that the empire is trying to stay well they are they're they're strictly staying to calling clones by their ct or cc call signs and not or, or their numbers rather than their call signs right removing stripping them away of that humanity putting them back into a level of just plain soldiers like we saw, you know, in the, how they were dis, um, displayed or how they were shown in, in the movies. But right. for him, even though he's on these missions and even though everybody around him is probably calling him and his troops by their clone numbers, he's still referring to all of them as their real names. He's still acknowledging right. them as their like human names or their you know live names or whatever that is. So we saw that piece of him. And then the other big piece was that, that whole exchange with Governor Tawny, which I, we didn't really get to dissect very much. But man, I felt really bad for him now. And it really, after the second, you watch it and it's like uncomfortable knowing, knowing the outcome of that because he's really putting himself out there. He truly believes in that negotiating because he learned that from Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was really trying to connect with this person, trying to connect on a human to human level. And I think that, you know, we'll talk about the, the kind of the ramifications of exactly what happened, but that really was the turning point for him, right? What exactly what happened there at that point. But. And I think something that people lose sight of is that just because the clones had to obey Order 66, 
doesn't they doesn't mean they became droids or became robots right and or mindless creatures that just followed orders and you know and just marched single file and that and they had no no brain anymore and that's that's 100 not the case i mean so they continue to call each other by their names rather than their numbers because mm -hmm. they again they're they're brothers they use the word brothers intentionally right i mean that's a choice to use the word brother even though you were all you're basically genetic copies you aren't really brothers you're just copies of one another i want to get technical about it but i mean sure. that people kind of view it that way is, is kind of surprising to me sometimes because i think you know it's clearly that they they still operate like they always have but they have a very clear directive that they must follow because they're programmed that way you know but it doesn't snap everything away and clean and, and cleanse everything away yeah that and order uh, sorry, that order was very specific. It was about the Jedi, you know? Right. And there right. are no Jedi anymore. So at that point, it's like, okay, I would imagine if a Jedi ever came forward, maybe it kicks in. We don't know. Maybe, it, you know, the effects are, are such that it doesn't kick it in. But that, again, that order was very specific. Outside of that, yeah, you would, I, would, I would assume they would continue to operate as they had. That's not the, it wasn't that expansive in terms of what it did to the clones. Right. And they're still human. So, I mean, when he goes to negotiate with Tani, I think it's really important that he's, he's been fighting a war for years, mm -hmm. you know, and it just ended and it felt like this is where we should be able to take our victory lap. Right. We should be able to go and settle in and, and help rebuild. We should, this is supposed to be the, the resurrection process, Re rebuilding and, and, you know, putting the Republic, I know it's the empire, but in, in theory, you know, you, you rebuild the public Republic bigger and better than it ever has before. Stronger. The bonds are stronger. You know, when we lift each other up now, we're, we're on the upswing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we mm -hmm. you know, killed each other for far too long. And so that he's human. While he's a soldier and doesn't know what else his life might be, that doesn't mean that they're not allowed to want something like that. Even soldiers want peace. I mean, I don't know any soldiers that I, I've met and had a conversation with that liked being shot at, you know, or, right. or felt like their life was constantly at risk or they couldn't not look over their shoulder at, at what was going on. So Yeah, look at Black Bersantin. You know, yeah, exactly. I mean, but I mean, those are the, so I mean, those are the things that I think those are natural for him to do that. Now it was, I think what was bold about it was afterwards when he started to defy the order of the governor or of the, you know, the governor they were trying to put into place, right? The rest of it, I think was actually pretty normal that he didn't just, you know, shoot her. He was doing what needed to be done in order to progress the mission, mm -hmm. right? Peaceful outcome is a lot better than a, than a bloodshed outcome. And so I, I viewed a lot of those things as not abnormal. I didn't think they were really all that abnormal. I thought they were really uh, ideal of a commander of someone in his stature. You want to have that flexibility of using all the tools in your utility belt, not just your blaster or your knife. Yeah. yeah and for him, that negotiating tool is, is pretty big. And he, sure, it's a skill that he's developed over time, yeah. right? And he's a great, a great mentor. With he Obi did it. Like, yeah, I mean, think about it. Like, I mean, right. they, it was effective too. It right? was very effective. Right. And I know they were for the sake of time, it was kind of pretty quick in my opinion, but oh, sure. the point is he, he knew how to, he knew how to connect with people. Right. And that was something that he learned from somebody like Obi-Wan Kenobi and just through his own personal experiences over the Clone Wars. And so he was still trying to exercise that. He was still trying to operate under the rules of engagement that the Republic had for him in his head. I think what he was thinking was the empire is just an extension of the Republic at the core. We're still the Republic. But yeah, now we're not at war. And so now we're out. We've got a bigger responsibility of expanding the galaxy, bringing peace and order. This is probably what's all going through his head. And then, of course, it all kind of, kind of comes crashing down. In terms of the rebellion, or I guess the re uh, not following orders, at the, at the lower levels, probably, you know, it's, there's no excuses, right? Those clones probably just are expected to fall in line. But there were so many examples where both Rex Cody, Fox, I mean, some of the other clones out there, the commanders, they did push back, right? And, and what, especially when things were, uh, let's see, not moral, I guess, in terms of the actions. If something was be, something being asked of them that was not morally right or it was kind, of, gray, yeah. kind of gray, and the, the perfect example is Pong Krell, right? right? I mean, how many times did Rex, I mean, yeah, Rex still fall, fell in line, but he finally got to a point where he was like, okay, this is enough. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. So the idea that they would push back, it's not, this isn't novel, right? It, it's happened many, many times. And you would expect that from your commanders, especially given the close relationship they had with the generals. Uh, you know, they were very well respected in the Republic. Again, for, for him, he still feels like this should all be part of, right? Nothing's changed. So this is how I should be operating. It should be operating this way. Of course, that's not the case. 
right? The empires are completely, they're evil. And that guy was particularly evil. I mean, we talked about him wanting to go, you know, hang the body up in, in the city to kind of send a message. So I think it was a very big shock and it, it kind of leads into this next question of, you know, how much was, how much was the, the action of AWOL attributed to the chip going bad or having, you know, not being as effective versus the actions that had happened or, you know, or was it some combination thereof? I think it's probably a combination because we know the chip was active and it was very effective for Cody. So I think something there has to have had, has to have changed or, you know, the effectiveness is wearing, is wearing down or whatever that might be. Something is different than it was what we saw on screen or Revenge of the Sith with Obi-Wan. I'd like to think that, I think even as a soldier, even with the, even with the chip, you have achieved victory. Your governor, your commanding officer, I guess if you want to call it that, is giving you an order to do something that is outside of the rules of combat. If you look at the, the rules of combat about how they do it, someone surrenders or, or you have a parlay, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not proper, at the very least, to betray them mm-hmm. and just gun them down and do that. That's what the separatists were doing, right? And so it's this idea of where he came from, what he was fighting for, those ideals, those morals, you know? And so by going AWOL, it's, it's him up. He's almost doing it because he's upholding the values of the Republic. Yeah. Because, and I think he's able to differ. He's finally been able to differentiate. And we, we got the hint throughout the episode, of course, that he was already getting to this point of what is this empire? Like we right. fought for all of these things. We, we, you know, we were, we were on the right side. We're the good guys. But now it feels like the things that we're being asked to do and the things that we're doing and the, and the people that we're hurting, that's not what we fought for. That's not what we fought for. Right. We're doing what the other guys were doing. Exactly. And so, but the, the, without the effectiveness, effectiveness of the chip in order to reaffirm what he, what they want him to do and force him to doing and force him into being compliant, I guess maybe is the word I'm looking for. You know, you have that, you have more freedom of thought. Mm-hmm. You have more freedom of action, maybe not of thought, but you have more freedom of action. You don't have that. You don't have the thing in your head, you know, forcing you to go one direction, even though you really want to tug a little further to the right or you really want to make a different decision, but you're not allowed to because you just, for whatever reason, you don't know why. And this is the torture part of the chips, right? Right. I think these guys know they want to make a different decision. They don't like the decision where they're making, but they don't have a choice but to pull the trigger because that's what they're wired to do. But so it's a mix though. I mean, you, you got to have that mix in there. He knows right and wrong. He knows what, he has his own moral ideals right now, but then also he doesn't have that governor in his head. I mean, so to speak, not the governor person, but the, you know, like the throttle forcing him to make a decision he doesn't want to make. I'm going to jump ahead just real quick. Cause I think it's probably important that we answer this question, just get it out of the way. But I saw over the weekend, there were a couple, there was an article. I forgot who did it. Uh, there was a video that I watched and then turned off very quickly. Cause I was like, this is, I don't believe that at all, but I just want to get your thoughts on this idea that maybe that Rampart actually did kill Cody and that he used that. He told Crosshair that he went AWOL. Because he wanted to, he's trying to in, indict, a, you know, Crosshair for all these different clones disappearing and going AWOL. I, I don't really buy that. I don't, like, to me, that would be terrible writing, honestly. Like, you have a character like Commander Cody that's beloved for all the reasons we've already talked about. You bring him back. There's a big celebration. And then you just unceremoniously just kill him off. I mean, that just seems like really lazy. Off screen, too, right? Right, exactly. Off screen. Like, it just... I don't understand these conspiracy theorists that are behind, behind this. this is what yeah, it, feels it sounds like, like clickbait to me. That's yeah, it's exactly probably clickbait, it like. right? It got me, so I was like, what? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense, right? And again, even in, so if, if Rampart did kill him, he would do it to make an example out of him, right? Mm-hmm. So you would know that he would put that in front of the clones. You know he would bring that to Tarkin and the emperors. Like, hey, we had another one. This is, this is going on. Right. I've taken care of it, but we need to, here's what I'm doing about it also here. But yeah, for him to lie to Crosshair, I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't put it past Rampart, I guess. I, Rampart's I capable of all those things. Yeah, sure. yeah he's capable. So, so I get that aspect of it. But I'm with you. To do it all off screen and just say that's the end of Cody unceremoniously after mm-hmm. spending a whole episode, a really good episode with him, yeah, would just be, I mean, you would, you would piss some people off if that you were really the case. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't put any stock in that one at all. The potential that you would have with a character like that out in the free roaming wild against the empire, very similar to, to Rex and, you know, Clone Force 99 and all the other ones. 
why would you bury that? It just doesn't, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. All right. So let's get, we, exactly. I mean, the, the, the better question of all of that, you know, is that it, does Cody feel like he's energized to rebel against the empire or is it, no, he just wants to get out like cut. I mean, that's the real question, right? Of, you know, that's the more interesting conversation. That's the more interesting story to tell, you know, from a story writer's perspective, yeah. you know, not, yeah, we killed him off screen just to see how Crosshair would react. Right. Right. No, that's not. I mean, it, it's a tool. You could do it. But I, this, this group doesn't seem to be, that's not their MO. And, and what so. he's doing and where he's going is something we're going to talk about. But before we do, I just have a quick question. So, so now that we've, we've kind of ruled that out, that, he, that he's dead, he is in fact alive. And I haven't put a lot of thought into this, but you know, there was obviously a breaking point, um, some combination of the chip and the actions and, and what he saw. There, I think, oh, so I did want to, sorry, let me just backtrack one second. The other thing that stuck out to me, and I don't know if we talked about this on the breakdown, but it came up, I watched the episode Friday morning, Friday, after, doesn't matter, but something stuck, stood out to me uh, that I had, didn't catch. We got the aftermath of all that. So all that was horrible stuff, right? They killed Tawny, put her body up there. And what we, what I didn't catch personally was the fact that all the clone troopers were leaving and all the galactic scripted whatever soldiers were coming in at that point, right? They were kind of, they were switching, switching of the guard. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? That's kind of sick. Like if they're using the clones to go in and do these like hard boiled, hard battle type operatives. And then once all that's done, right? They're just fodder is really what they are. They don't like them. They really don't want them. But you know what, if it's going to be a, you know, mission impossible, or if there's a, even a slight chance, just they're doing Pong Krell's, what Pong Krell is doing, right? Just send in the clones, let them, and if they die, they die, if we, whatever. And then once they're done, get them out of there. Let's put our own people in there. So we don't have to worry about them, you know, bucking the system or, you know, the chips faltering or whatever. Get the people in there that we're paying really well to fight for the Galactic Empire and stand there and who believe in our values or, you know, whatever, uphold the law as we see it. That would be kind of sick if that's really what they were doing is just keep sending clones on these missions like that and slowly killing them off through attrition. I think some of it makes sense, though, because they're also your highly skilled. They're the ones who have actually been battle tested. Very true. Yeah, good point. And so they're the ones that they are the experts. They know how to go do this, and they're very effective, and they've been doing it for a really long, really long time. Do we have confirmation, though, that the, the troopers coming in weren't clones? I didn't necessarily get that impression that they were all you know, conscripted troopers. It was the helmet. They were right, coming I in just, with different style, like the more, or like the more, like the different style helmet coming in. And that's how I, that's how I assumed that was them coming in. And none of the clones are wearing those helmets at all. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if that's, if, if that's what they're supposed to represent, then yeah. I mean, I, I think that would, that would be something, but then also if I'm a clone trooper, I would be like, these are the, these are the Imperial guards, right? These are just the, you know, the, the sentries. They don't actually do anything. The peacekeepers, yeah. right? They just come in. Yeah, yeah, the peacekeepers. Yeah, yeah. And, and not to belittle any of those types of things, but from this respect, I mean, these are the non-skilled combatants coming in. Right. They just go in there and beat people and, and scare them into submission. Yeah, but we've actually, you bring in the special forces, and that's what the clones have, have kind of become within the Imperial Army, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... You can view it a few different ways, though. I see exactly. I see where you're coming from. Hey, everyone. It's Jonesy. We hope you've enjoyed this preview of the Patreon episode. If you'd like to listen to the episode in full, we invite you to head over to cantinacast.com slash Patreon. Access to this episode begins at the $2 After Dark tier. If you're interested in joining a future Patreon episode, we encourage you to check out our Now Part of the Tribe and Delusions of Grandeur tiers. You can find all the details at cantinacast.com slash Patreon. On behalf of Albert and myself, Thank you all for your continued support, and may the Force be with you.